finance guys doing in the HR conference? <laughs> that is the first uh, thing that will come to your mind. So, uh, you know, I made a transition, uh, I think two years back, about 18, 19 years in the industry, and now I'm a full-time professor at IMT. Uh, it was a conscious move. Mm -hmm. So I have uh, advantage of seeing HR on both ends, actually. Uh, so I was part of a large multinational bank. Um, uh, and I am now part of an educational institute, which is IMT. So I've seen both sides, sides actually. And I think what uh, I feel is that uh, educational institute is right at the source. So in the bank, we had a program called the International Graduate Program, and they used to hire from these premier institutes. Uh, in the very first year, uh, we found out that there were 60 percent attrition, first year. Only 40 people, 40 percent of the graduates stayed in the company, uh, and we were shocked. We did a survey. Uh, what was it that were bothering them? Many of them came back to us saying that uh, we didn't have a con proper conversation with the managers. So the kind of time which uh, managers gave to these early career students in the organization, I don't know, was something which they find a miss. Uh, so I always say that it's the culture of the organization that tells you how long is the employee is going to stay. It's not the money that you pay to the uh, employee. So it's never the money. It's about the culture of the organization uh, that defines. And the culture comes from the top management. There is no question about it. Uh, I always feel that uh, it's the culture that you, what, what the CEO sets or the top management team sets. And uh, so let me come to the discussion in... Uh, the HR partnership. HR or a company can do a long way in terms of uh, bringing this partnership. So two questions I just want to uh, kind of focus upon is the uh, how companies HR and educational institute collaboration bridge the gap between employability and not employment. I'm not talking about employment in this case. I'm talking about employability. Now, employability is a very important question. So, you know, when a company comes to an educational institute, it's either at the time when the summer placement is happening or at the time of the final placements. What I'm talking about is a continuous conversation with the educational institute, right at the curriculum stage to, to delivering certain cu curriculum from the industry perspective. That ensures that the employability of that employee of the student becomes much, much higher. So there is one, this, this partnership will come into play where there is a constant conversation between the company, the HR, and uh, the education institute and the faculty so that we are at a common area somewhere. So that's something which I wanted to kind of think about. Uh, so why this employability I'm talking about? Employability means uh, from a perspective that the, that the candidate is day, uh, uh, day one ready in the industry. So, you know, whenever an employee comes to, uh, to any industry, maybe financial services or manufacturing, uh, he's given some kind of uh, one month or six months kind of a training. I don't want this training. I want the, employee, uh, the, the student to come and start performing. This can only happen if the partnership between HR and uh, the education institute is much stronger. They come to the institute to deliver. Uh, the curriculum uh, should be about 30% delivered by the industry. So to make sure that these uh, uh, students are day one ready uh, to join. The second point I want to uh, ponder upon is the increasing pool of skill. So there is a difference between education and skill. Skill means that for a certain industry, you need certain skills. For financial services industry, you need, and these skills keep changing. So, so when I'm saying you have to build up over education a certain amount of skills for a certain base industry, and that can only happen when uh, I would say that these, uh, uh, these companies come to the campus and deliver and talk to our students, uh, deliver certain part of the curriculum, are there with us in designing the curriculum as well. So this becomes a regular source of, uh, I would say, long-term state in the company as well. One of the important things I want to talk about is the skilled workforce. Uh, skilled workforce right at the campus can only happen if the companies come uh, and HR can take a lead in this, uh, uh, that companies on various areas, for, for, for example, banking and financial services, uh, we had various uh, uh, components like investment banking or uh, wealth management. So what we do at the institute, we try to get these people to the institute, deliver certain portion of the lecture or curriculum, 
so that the students are day one ready to, to be employable uh, and they don't have to waste any much more time within the company to be, get trained further. So these are the two questions I wanted to kind of look at. Uh, so what can look at, I have put in certain points. So one is curriculum, uh, curriculum alignment with the industry standards. Uh, I would uh, say that uh, when the curriculum is being designed, let the industry, specific industry people come to the campus, uh, design the curriculum with us. So it will make, it will make sure that the curriculum is relevant uh, to be delivered and uh, it will make, also make sure that the, the, the minimum expectation when the, when the student is going out in the corporation is updated uh, to the latest industry standards that are required. The second point I would say is the common platform for engagement for industry students and faculty. Uh, just to give an example, at IMT we have created the Center for Financial Markets uh, last, uh, this year itself. And what we, we intend to do with the Center for Financial Markets is to look at partnership between industry, students and faculty to do joint research, joint curriculum, and also look at uh, certain kind of ideas that generate all of these common platforms. Uh, what it does is it gives a common platform to all the three which are, in, which are, I would say, very, very important components that faculty, industry, and students also have a certain kind of a discussion uh, with, within the platform so that they are ready day one. The third, I would say, uh, which I think is lacking in the, in, the, in the industry is research collaboration within the industry. It is happening a lot in US as well as UK and with many of the developed countries, but we lack somehow uh, these uh, research collaborations and industry uh, projects uh, uh, somehow, I, th I think there is, there is some, kind of a, some kind of a gap between uh, in the edu uh, Indian education sector. So what I suggest is the industry projects. So what we did this year uh, uh, through our Center for Financial Markets and consulting arm, that the students are working on some actual industry problems. And uh, this involves the industry leaders, the students and the faculty working on a common project. And uh, we currently we are looking at about seven to eight projects uh, and certain project consulting projects are paid by the industry. So this helps, what this helps, what it does is that it gives a certain kind of uh, idea to the students. The faculty also knows what is happening in the industry and certain, uh, some, some kind of a problem is also solved uh, within the industry as well. Third is the industry mentorship uh, and career guidance. This is extremely important because I think this starts at a point when the company comes to the campus to pick up a student. I think industry mentorship, uh, I cannot uh, overemphasize the importance of this. Within the company, when the student joins the company, uh, a mentor has to be assigned when he joins the company. And right from the beginning, he's picked up from the campus, the mentorship has to start. And that mentorship has to go till one year with when, once he joins the company. What it does is, it also ensures for the students that he stays in the company for long. Uh, and if you look at, I'll, let me go to an example which I took it earlier as well. Uh, in, in, our, in my previous organization, uh, the, the, uh, the students from the graduate program, which we picked up from the top business schools, majority of them, I would end up in the top positions within the, within, within the bank uh, because they were mentored by each of the industry leaders within the bank as well. The third, I would say, is the skill gap analysis. Uh, this also could be solved from a perspective of uh, industry coming to the campus and looking at students, where is that gap between the skill for specific sectors, for specific industries? Are we talking about financial service industry? What are the gaps from the current curriculum and what they can look at to build this gap? So this is, I think, uh, this. So these are the points which I thought that uh, require help from the HR, from the companies that kind of gap. So let me. This thing, the first is the curriculum, second is the common platform engagement, third is the research, collaboration and industry projects, which you can come and give it to the, this thing. Fourth is the industry mentorship uh, and career guidance, and third is the skill gap analysis. So all of these four, if I, I feel that if, if they are done properly, uh, we could create a workforce which is skilled, stays in the company for long term, and can, could deliver in the company as well. Uh, uh, 
but some of the challenges which I feel is the alignment of objectives. Companies have different objectives, am I right? And all educational institutes have different objectives. So there is there's not a, there's a mismatch, mismatch of the alignments between the two, which I feel is a huge challenge. So somehow I feel that there has to be a common ground for the educational institute and the corporates to come together so that ultimately it's, you know, if the students joined a co particular company, if he stays for longer, it's in the benefit of the company, am I right? So right, the investment has to be done when he's in the campus and it has to go towards the first, very first year itself. Second is the skill gap and identification. I think both, both can come. I think we do a little poor job in terms of skill gap identification when uh, we are the campus. So at least industry can come to the campus and look at where, which industry we have that skill gap. Uh, third is the lifelong learning culture. Uh, I would say that once the students leave the campus, um, I think his, um, there are very few companies who invest in lifelong, like lifelong learning culture. So bringing bring back the students to the campus also kind of look at some kind of an industry connect throughout his career and also gives a certain kind of long-term vision for him in the company. And third is measuring the ROI. Both companies and the education institutes have to look at from a ROI perspective that what it gives gives them uh, in the long term if they invest in the, all the four which I've just uh, focused on. So, so the, to sum it up, what I'm going to say is that uh, uh, we, Educational Institute are right at the, at the cusp, right at the beginning of the source. This is the, this is the time or this is the uh, time when the, uh, they, the, 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 uh, the, the students are looking for a long-term career in a company. This is the time when they, they have to be nurtured uh, by the company or the mentors and by the educational institutes. So the overall what I'm going to say is that uh, it is a combined effort from the company as well as educational institutes that we can go a long way. Thank you.